Racing and training at altitude places extra emphasis on the fueling and hydration requirements for athletes. That's why we're here at the Hoka Altitude Camp in Font Romeo in the Pyrenees, helping a group of elite runners dial in their hydration and fueling strategies. So let's get to it. So coming out to Font Romeo where the training is not so intense, and we're being very respectful to the altitude. It's a nice way of just increasing and progressing the aerobic base at this time of year. Okay, so they've arrived at altitude. They're not straight into the hard work, I assume. So what does that sort of first week at altitude look like? And so for me, the first seven to 10 days are very, very easy. You often see the guys getting a little bit full of themselves because they've got too much energy. But for me, that's a good sign because we're just taking it easy and just easing ourselves into the altitude and just letting the body adjust. We all know from a physiological point of view, it takes seven to 10 days for the body to start easing in and doing the adaptations, to the altitude. What do you ask the athletes to look for or, or what do you look for as a coach in terms of monitoring that, at least in the first week and then whether they can then progress the intensity uh, into the second and third weeks of the camp? Yeah, well the easy signs for me are, look, I ask very simple questions. How are you sleeping? How are you feeling? And generally within their training runs themselves, because they're quite easy, I can check their heart rates and ask how they're feeling in themselves. And normally a, an effort level we look for is around about three or four, maybe five at the tops. They will all look at their heart rate and they'll find as their body's starting to adjust to the, the altitude, they'll be running faster at the same type of heart rates. Look, one of those things which people perhaps underestimate at altitude is you burn more calories. By just being here, your calorific burn is higher so it's about up, up taking in the calories you're doing throughout the day, making sure that after the sessions, you're fueling quickly after the session. You're fueling before the sessions and occasions you're fueling within the session. So it's about keeping those calories going, keeping your energy levels at the right state. Altitude training is a great part of the training regime, but it's something you have to respect. And that includes diet, includes effort, includes hydration, includes doing all of the right things. You have to be more on it at altitude than you do at sea level. When we go to altitude, sort of every uh, thousand meters gain in elevation reduces VO2 max by about 6%. And that low availability of oxygen is obviously underpinning that issue. Now, the athletes will benefit from that ultimately by spending more time at altitude and exercising under those conditions because the lack of oxygen or the low availability of oxygen will actually lead to some really cool adaptations in the muscle and also in the blood. So one of the key ones being an increase in hemoglobin mass and the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and so when we get an increase in haemoglobin mass in the blood we've got much more capacity to pick up oxygen and carry that to tissues when we go back down to sea level. I wanted to invite you guys here um, so that we could do some sweat tests with our athletes just to give them some insights into how much they're sweating and what, what their sodium uh, sort of concentration is in their sweat and just yeah giving them some data some insights that they can take forward into their future training uh, yeah and, and sort of future performance hopefully. <laughs> So everyone loses a different amount of sodium in their sweat. And of course, we all sweat at different rates as well. And so we're sweat testing every person here and every runner here at the Altitude Camp in Font Romeo to try and help them hone in on their individual needs from a hydration perspective. Yeah, so it's been really interesting. We've had a around 15 of the athletes come in today and there's been a very much a, a very wide variety of the the sodium loss so we had marie who uh who came in and she loses 635 milligrams uh so that's on the slightly lower end of the scale but then on the higher end of the scale we had baptiste who uh who lost 1576 which is obviously you know pretty high amount um and what's really interesting is uh, these athletes range their their race distance ranges from 5k to, to marathon so therefore their strategies are going to be very different um with the the marathon runners obviously fueling and hydrating through the race is going to be important 
uh, and they will need they will need to take on uh, electrolytes and, and carbs to for their body to perform in its best to, to get to that finish line. Whereas the the maybe the five k ten k runners, it's very much about the preloading and, and the recovery afterwards. <laughs> So there you have it, an insight into how we help athletes perfect their race nutrition at altitude and some fueling and hydration considerations for if you're deciding to come up to altitude and train. If you'd like any more support or advice, then feel free to book a video call with one of our athlete support crew by the link in the description below. And that's me done. I'm off for one last run in this beautiful French Pyrenees. Mm -hmm.